Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome. Uh, we've got three more people in the waiting room. Let's see if we can get them in. Unless I'm on a lag. Oh, um, I'm, I'm monitoring it. I'll just keep letting okay, people cool. in. All right. So I'm going to start. So good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we've got 58 or so people coming into the uh, to the meeting. Thank you all for your attendance on a week when, um, I don't know, a lot of people probably like to be asleep. Um, so thanks for joining. My name is Miles Thompson. I am the board president of the Philadelphia Folk Song Society. I'm saying this because we're recording this. And this meeting is October 25th, 2003, 2023 of the Philadelphia Folk Song Society. Um, Welcome, everybody. I'd like to uh, call this meeting to order. Um, so the first thing we need to do is to vote to approve the minutes from September of 2023. If somebody would move and then somebody would second, that'd be great. I can move that we vote to approve the minutes from September 2023. Kimberly has voted I'll, to approve. I'll second. And George has seconded that. Excellent. Now, moving back, we also need to approve the minutes from August because we got behind because we've all been busy. You so vote, vote on that. We need to vote on that as well. Someone needs to move on that. No, you need to vote the last one. Yeah. You. you oh, do we all vote? Motion, you second it. Now you need to vote. We know we all need to vote. Yes, yes, yes. All in favor, please raise aye. your hand and say aye. 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 Thank you. Unanimous. We are saying to approve the August minutes as well. I'll second. Okay, let's do a vote on August minutes. Aye. 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 Um, the reason, the reason, of course, we are saying it is because some things get lost in the audio, and Wendy's going to use the audio to transcribe this. So, yeah, Wendy, um, those were the two Eric's. Eric Robbins first, then Eric Ring seconded. Yeah. So, okay, so there we are. Welcome everybody. Um, so let's see a couple of president's updates in case you have missed it please do save the date for our festival in 2024 august 16 17 18 are the weekend dates um that would that's the dates they're open to the public um basic information um applications for the festival director have been received and interviews for seven different candidates will begin next week uh there was a bit of a delay in getting to this as life got insane for everybody um so we're a little behind where we want it to be but we will be starting that process and people will be contacted uh within the next couple of days um a festival management structure and team is being created and is being talked about it's not finalized yet uh but we will also be contacting people about that early in november if not before just so that you know that is happening uh we plan to put festival tickets on sale in december we are revising or wishing to revise the ticketing cost structure to make it simple to use and to track. One of the things we discovered when we started looking at it was that cost, uh, various levels of tickets were just kind of all over the place and actually really confusing to people. Be, but we will be starting that process. And Hello. Sorry. Um, sorry. Um, uh, it's very confusing to people trying to buy tickets who aren't familiar with us. And it was even more confusing trying to make sense of what types of tickets were sold at the back end. So we're going to be working on that um, again in process. Uh, we had a great response from the membership tables uh, so far at the various shows at the Keswick Theater, including the performance by Megan Carey at the Lucinda Williams show last Sunday night. A big thank you to all of our volunteers and thank you to Megan for performing. Rob was at that show. Do you want to just give us a brief update, Rob? Sure, Miles. It was a great show. First of all, Megan's a fabulous performer. We had, at times, close to 40 people in that room, some standing, and it was a very exciting experience. Uh, the band was full of energy. People were pleased. Almost, uh, It looked like most of the people were PFS people, but there were a few people that had never heard of us, so they kind of wandered in and they got excited about it. Um, definitely uh, some people manning the table, and it was just a very nice evening. And then Lucinda uh, started playing and everybody left. Now, some people went there. Yes, which, which which is to be expected. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Um, 
One of the things I've noticed, and I haven't seen it yet from this one, but at every one of our events where we've had a marketing table, in the weeks that follow an event where we've had a marketing table, is probably how I should have put this. In the weeks that follow, we get a small flurry of uh, memberships coming through. Um, I'm not convinced that I'm not totally sure that that's cause and effect. Uh, we'll see if indeed this week we get uh, some because that would uh, uh, reinforce that pattern. So I'd say that's that's kind of a useful thing to know about. Um, so it means that that particular piece of, of soft sell marketing is probably working. So that's nice to know. Um, thank you for that, Rob. Uh, I'm sorry, let me scroll. <clears throat> I wanted to send out a big thanks to our volunteer Doug Hurth, who has taken on the management and uh, the management of the membership tables at the Keswick and other membership issues, and is also helping us with organization opera operations around the office. It took a whole lot off my plate as soon as he stepped in, and I'm I'm really grateful for Doug. So I want to publicly thank him for that. Um, the other thing, just in general, is that we talked last month about trying to get archives from iron mountain this month it's not gonna happen so we're looking for doing that in november um likewise the emptying of the storage unit at ad moyer in gilbertsville might happen november or possibly december um we it was just this month turned out to be too busy and um you know when we don't have a professional staff um we are all relying on our time and this has been a particularly busy week a uh, month professionally and personally for people so uh tax issues update eric ring okay so where we are um we have sent in the request to abate the penalties for the 2019 uh late filing for the 990s uh, we're still waiting to hear back from that. And then I I pretty much have the 2020 and 2021 late filing uh, requests for abatements uh, prepared, and I'm going to submit them. I sort of wanted to see what they were going to do with the 19, because that's the biggest one. Um, and then, so for those who are waiting, for 2022, the 990 is, I would say, I don't know, 80% complete. Um, I do need to get together with Eric Robbins because I need to uh, break out those percentages of programming and stuff like that. So maybe we can kind of hook up over the weekend. And uh, once I do that, then we can uh, file the 22, which would be our first on-time filing in three years. <laughs> Once I get that that done, I will file the BCO 10, uh, which would continue our license to solicit donations. Um, and then it's just kind of keeping that course going. So we're in good shape. There were some um, payroll returns which weren't filed properly before uh, we got on the board. And we're dealing with those, and I think there's probably be some notices coming in with that. But again, we'll kind of deal with those as time progresses. Okay. We got a, a strange bill for $261 or something from the Philadelphia Department of Revenue saying something is overdue. But of course, in typical Philadelphia Department of Revenue fashion, they don't tell you what it is or what it's for. Um, and I'm inclined to just pay it. <laughs> I'm sure it's sure yeah. it's um, send, you know. it, send it to me and I'll take a look at it. Yeah. I it, it it at first glance it gave me no information and you know, I could call the office but they'd no, not pick up. So um, you know, there's okay. that. Um I'll get to that when I get back to the office. Um okay. Is that all for the tax issues update, Eric Ring? Uh for the tax issues, yes. Okay, good. Finance report, Eric Robbins. You, you are muted. Can you see my screen? There you go. Yep. Okay. Uh, Eric, I am available this weekend to 
uh, do the 990 prep with you because I do not have a World Series to watch. Um, okay, I <laughs> so I want to start out by giving a big shout out and thank you to Marie Dalton. I should have done this previous to tonight, uh, so I apologize to Marie. Marie has been completely instrumental, donating hundreds of hours of her time to getting our books up to date, years of uh, putting the books together with very little documentation, and we would not be caught up at all without her. So big shout out. Thank you to Marie and anyone who knows Marie personally, please give her a thank you uh, from yourselves as well. All right. So the Treasurer's Report for October. Um, as we mentioned the last meeting, I had prepared the financial statements for 2022, gave them to the outside CPA. The outside CPA issued the compilation, so that's done. And as Eric mentioned, he's preparing the 990. The compilation goes to the state with the BCO filing. Everything due November 15th, and we're going to be in good shape uh, there. And going forward, we'll get it all done well before the extended deadline. Um, so we're up to date, uh, thanks to Marie and Eric and um, moving forward. Unfortunately, we did have a net loss or what I call an increase in our net deficit for the month of $11,928. And that was because we were assessed another $9,160 in penalties for the late filing of the 21,990. We knew that was gonna come because we knew that was the final year. So there's no new um, ones that are going to be coming down. And, you know, I do believe that we feel that we will successfully abate these uh, liabilities versus having to pay them. And we'll see where that takes us. And we also did receive a 20, uh, excuse me, a $5,200 bill from the prior CPA that we were using for the 2020 compilation. And once again, uh, we're going to try to settle that because uh, we already paid them uh, as far as I'm concerned, enough uh, for a compilation engagement. Um, so, but that did come in and unfortunately, you know, I recorded those expenses and those liabilities. So it did result in this 11,928 loss. We can look at that now. Uh, during the month, we collected revenue of 5,900. That is uh, member dues and contributions that we've been getting in thanks to all that are now uh, sending contributions now that we can finally get them. Uh, we paid operating expenses of 1600 So you can see our monthly from a cash standpoint is good. Uh, we're generating cash, but unfortunately had to accrue the big numbers. I just told you the IRS penalties for 2021 and the CPA bill uh, from 2020. We did get a bill for $1,000 for our the CPA who prepared our 22 compilation. And that is a bargain in comparison to what the old CPA was charging. Um, and we have our line of credit interest. Uh, the October interest gets accrued. It gets paid. It's due on November 1st. Miles typically makes the payment before month end. Uh, so we don't always have it accrued. Sometimes we pay it. But at this point, it hasn't been paid. It's due, uh, we, you know, six days uh, to that's make a payment. That's, and I'm sure we'll tomorrow. also yep. make $20 extra to pay principal rounding it up to 900 miles. To be honest with you, I think we can actually start making some larger payments. Okay. In the line of credit now that we we do have cash, it'll reduce the interest that we're being charged, and we can always reborrow if we need funds. Um, so total expenses for the month seventeen eight five one, and our net loss or increase in net deficit is eleven thousand nine hundred and change. Added to our beginning net deficit puts us in an ending net deficit of 125, 131. But once again, the majority of the liabilities in that net deficit are things that we hope we won't have to pay. And we can take a look at our balance sheet now that itemizes that. Okay, so we have uh, about $56,000 in our bank account right now and $181,000 in liabilities, hence the net deficit of 125. Uh, the line of credit, you know, once again, it hasn't changed since last month because we haven't made our payment yet. Um, but that's not due um, until March of next year and can just extend. Uh, it is certainly our goal to pay that off as soon as we can with uh, from proceeds of fundraising events that we plan so that we won't be carrying it. We can save the money on the interest. And so we'll have flexibility to draw on it before next festival if we have to start paying some bills before um, some ticket proceeds come in. Um, but the penalties, as you can see, we have, you know, close to 65,000 there. We're hoping that we can, you know, get away with abatement there and not have to pay anything. Um, reserve for the t-shirts. So the t-shirts will be paid for next year. Talked about the line of credit, the two CPA bills. 
Um, TP trailers, I don't know, that's, that was a liability that was being reported before I took over as treasurer. So I don't even know if that exists. I, I believe that has been taken care of. I believe it was actually taken care of before you came on. Okay. I'll have to look into that. Um, we had a, a, a benefactor who was the cousin of the owner of TP trailers who said that she would reach out and get square with them, whatever was left over. Um, I think that 580 was made to go away. I'll have to look at that. Okay, great. Well, we just decreased our net deficit by 580 if we don't have to pay that bill. So. Assuming that's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And then we have our Upper Salford bill, uh, township bill. It was originally 5000 We're paying 500 a month. We've made two payments, and the entire bill will be paid off, I think, by June of next year before we have to pay them for next year's fest. Right. right. Um, so that's the breakdown of our net deficit. And then the last financial statement is our cash flow statement. And what that does is it reconciles the bottom line, which you know doesn't look good at 11.9, but can, you can see that we actually did generate cash of 3,800 because we had to accrue these bills, which we did not pay and hopefully won't have to pay them all. So the end result was an increase of cash. We actually didn't make a payment on our line of credit yet, uh, though we will by November 1st. And we increased our cash uh, from 52,000 uh, as of September this board meeting to 50, 56,000, close to 56,000 now. Thank you, Eric. Um, I appreciate that. I'll make that, uh, I'll make that payment. I'll ch double check with you what you think we ought to pay um, tomorrow. Um, when we, and it's early in the morning and I have a clear head, um, which is when I don't have a clear head. But anyway, Okay, thank you. Anything else you wanted to add? Uh, that's it for me. Question at the board end, Kimberly. Thank you. Um, Eric, real quick, for the t-shirts, the 5,000, is that for the True Believer t-shirts that you're holding that money? Yeah, I mean, I just put an estimate together because we've collected the money and we owe them shirts, so I didn't want to reflect it all as revenue without having an offsetting liability. So just an estimate, just to put something on the books, obviously the actual can be more, can be less, hopefully less, but uh, just wanted to get that on the books. No, that's awesome. Thank you. Good, thanks. Any other questions from board members up to Eric Robbins? All right, thank you all. Um, thank you, Eric Robbins. Uh, development report, Rob. All right, well, I have some exciting news. Uh, we are just about ready to launch our sponsorship efforts. In fact, we've already launched them for the uh, festival. And I wanna thank um, volunteer Sarah Sweet, who has helped develop the packages as well as board member Kimberly Sinclair, who has been instrumental in many pieces of this entire process. And the exciting news is we already have somebody interested uh, the Louisiana Bureau of Tourism is interested in a five figure sponsorship level. It is not definite yet, but they are serious. And I have a witness. Uh, we want to thank volunteer Joe Henderson, who will be integral, integrally, in, whatever, involved in the entire process. And uh, he was on the call as well to, to listen in. So it will also uh, kind of spark a strategy if we have one Bureau of Tourism interested for a state maybe we'll be sending out our sponsorship packets to 50 states and see what happens so uh we'll stay tuned on that so that's been a big move forward as far as our events we have the large exciting um not yet disclosed event that will not yet be definite uh because that's why we're not disclosing it it's not yet definite but it is still green lighted uh, to possibly happen in the spring. Meanwhile, though, we don't want to rest on that one opportunity. So we will be reconvening as a resource development committee shortly and talking about a more recent event that we can do, something closer in on the calendar and get their input as to uh, how we will uh, do that and who will be part of it. One other thing, um, this is somewhat related development. We already want to begin to think about people who would want to sell ads for the program book. And I do know there may have been people in the past, maybe even in this meeting that have done that. If you would be kind enough to email me uh, and we can have some discussion about that because that's something that we want to kind of launch uh, fairly soon as well. Sorry, I was muted. Thank you, Rob. Um, any questions for Rob from the board? 
Okay, nicely done. Short, sweet, to the point. I like that. Thanks. Um, musicians, artists, cooperative report. Musical artist cooperative report is the correct name. I'm spelling it wrong. Uh, Rob, you can take over if you want. Yes, uh, we are regrouping now in a new format to make the musical artist musical perform Mac musical. I don't know. What's artist the cooperative. Name. Musical artist cooperative work uh, seamlessly starting in 2024. The activity between now and then will be twofold. A lot of it will be behind the scenes working with volunteer Amora Levine to make sure that we know uh, all of the, um, the questionnaire responses and how that all will come together. Uh, and then making sure everyone who's been in the Philly co-op has an opportunity to respond and to be involved again if they're interested. We'll then launch in 2024 uh, a system that will allow others to apply. Meanwhile, though, activities have already begun with Megan Carey, as you heard, and we are contemplating, I need to run this by a few board members, one other MAC activity before the end of the year. Cool. Thank you. Sure. All right. Um, ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Communications report. Kimberly. Thank you, Miles. Marketing and comms has been busy as usual, but I'll make this short and sweet if possible. Um, I wanted to let everyone know that the meetings from 2023, the board meetings are on our official YouTube channel. I've uploaded them all thanks to Six, as always, for hosting and recording. I made fancy thumbnails for everybody, and I want to thank everybody who has subscribed to our YouTube channel. Believe it or not, that does us, that helps us. So I'm going to drop the link here in the chat for everybody. And if everybody can run right now, or not right now, when we're done, and subscribe to our channel, that would be super helpful. I've got more in my inbox that Six sent me. So the goal is to get all of our meetings up so anyone can watch them. I also cleaned up the channel a little bit, which was fun. Um, I wanted to thank all of our photographers. We are discovering new photos every day. I'm finding folders, and I've got some scheduled to share. So look for those to come out on Throwback Thursday. You guys have been amazing. And don't forget that Mark Smith is selling his, and all proceeds will come to the society. So if you're looking for some cool photos um, of many that we have. Um, now, something I want to warn everybody about. We have been inundated with spam on our page. I don't know if you all have noticed, but there are folks who are trying to sell merchandise on the page. And if I could share my screen, where is it? Let me try it. Um, it looks like, ah, taking y'all everywhere. It looks like this. This is not the society. This is somebody we don't even know. So just a word of warning. If you <clears throat> see something like that, please report it to us, report it to Facebook or send a message to us and we will take it down immediately. Um, just wanted to let everybody know again that that is not us. Unfortunately, that is spam. And it also happens if they tag people and say, you know, buy this kind of thing, it's not us. So uh, just wanted to let everybody know. Um, we will have more information uh, about shows that we have coming up that we've partnered with local Philly folks. Um, we've got those in the works, so we'll be offering discounts to that. And saving the best for last, the website is right now in the process of turning over from the old site to the new site. So if you go to pfs.org, might be a little bit wonky, so don't do it yet. Do it on Friday. Um, the only thing that will not be active yet is the members area. That's because that takes a little bit more time because it's going to be super special. And we're uploading all of the documents and things. We're in the process of doing that now. So that shouldn't take us too much longer. Um, yeah, so I think that's all. I was reading off my notes, but thank you all very much. Any questions, let me know. Eric Robbins. Yeah, I have a question. Kimberly, do we sell any merchandise on our Facebook page? We sell no merchandise that I know of. Right. So um, nobody. So anything that selling merchandise is not coming from us. No one right. should buy anything off our Facebook page. Right. Correct. We, Thank we you. don't have. We're not ordering merchandise. We have a sort of mismatch of leftover things that we are selling the clothing of at membership events. Um, but we don't have a. We do not have a a catalog of items that are available. So anything that shows up is a if, if you see something say something homeland security issue it's not real 
Um, we'll get there eventually, but uh, it's low on the list right now. Thanks, Eric. Kimberly. Hi, yes. it's Mark. Uh, thank you for mentioning that I was selling pictures. I appreciate that. Um, it would be extremely helpful if people on the board, members, anybody would repost the things that I post. Um, I have a limited audience and it, I'm sure the audience of everybody else put all together would be much, much larger. And I thank you. Thank you, Mark. And we're very grateful for what you're doing with your wonderful photographs of <clears throat> donating uh, proceeds to PFS. It's it's really, really kind of you. And it'd be it'd be a lot, lot better if I sold any. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll let's let's <laughs> let's push those and and, and share them and, and move Thank them on. You. Thank That'll you. Help. I appreciate it. Good. Thanks, Mark. Um, and now we're looking at membership report from Rob. I have Kimberly listed on that. I don't know if Kimberly actually needs to add anything, but Rob in particular, go ahead. No, I'm good, Rob. Go ahead. Thank you, Kimberly. Um, so just the numbers. Thanks to Erin Gorth Lawler, hopefully said her last name properly. She has been tracking our membership and is doing a lot of great uh, back-end work. We had 1102 memberships uh, at the end of September. We're a little bit under now. We're 1088 from expired memberships and a couple have are new and renewed. So we're floating below and above 1100 the last couple of uh, months. We believe that a lot of the new ones that came in through um, uh, the 61 for 61 campaign, some of those were actually expiring because it was their second membership so we're not too concerned but it shows there's a lot of room for growth still we have um thousands more on our facebook pages so at some point maybe we'll come up with a strategy to snag a few more members thank you to all the members who have re-upped though yeah if you if you have uh if you have any time since we've been doing this thing uh join joined given re-upped given more thank you thank you thank you you're the only reason we're operating so thank you very much uh rob anything else you wanted to add <clears throat> any questions for rob from the board george do you have there's government governance issues afoot do you want to share yeah i've got something uh to put up there if i can find it can you see my screen yep all right and what happened to it? There it is. Okay, uh, the board of directors election is coming up at the end of the year. So announcement was made in the October newsletter about the nominations now being accepted. There are three seats up for election. Uh, three board members hold those seats already and they're going up for re-election. Uh, instructions for society member nomination petitions has been created and will be provided to society members that are in good standing wishing to be nominated or to nominate someone else. Member in good standing means that you are an existing paying member. The petitions have to be received on or before November 16th. The slate of candidates will be announced before the end of November and the election is at the last meeting in December. And that is it. Cool. Thank you, George. Let me just reiterate for everybody listening that we have three positions currently on our board that were appointed as per the bylaws uh, for people that had left the board, all three of whom would be up for re-election. So I believe that is Eric Robbins, Eric Ring, and Rob Kutzik. Is that correct? That's right. So, the, so, so, so these guys would be up for uh, re-election, and um, I think you know where I stand on that. Um, so, so yeah, um, I, I haven't been able to do any of this without them. So, so thanks. Um, okay, let me um, see where we are. Because we're in sort of a not very contentious period of, of stuff. That's the series of reports. We are now going to open up, unless there are questions beforehand from the board members, they're going to do 
uh, Q and A from the members. So, who's got questions that need answers? Let's keep them professional and keep them direct. I see Jenny French has a hand up. Go ahead. Um, Jenny. I don't know how I missed. Who is Mark? I saw a picture of somebody show up. Uh, you know, six put someone's photo up there, and you said, "Mark, you thank you for doing something." And I don't know who that was okay. or what he was doing. That That's is the question. And the second question is. When is that December meeting so I can write it on my calendar and make sure that I'm present? Uh, the first part is that is Mark Smith, who is a professional photographer who has been taking photographs of the Folk Song Society and Folk Festival for years. Um, and as a private um, artist, has offered to sell his art, his photography of the PFF uh, shoots um, and raise money for PFS in the process. So that's Mark Smith. And let me check the calendar. December 6th. Yep, it is December 6th. Now, usually, folks, you know, the, the usual pattern is that we do the, the, uh, the last Wednesday in the month, except for December, because the last Wednesday in the month falls between, well, it's the 27th, and it falls in that week when a lot of people are celebrating or away or have holidays or whatever. So that meeting will be December 6th, which is coming up. Cool. Thank you. Other questions? If you can use the, if you can use the hand raise uh, button, it's easier to see. Dave Axler. Dave, go ahead. I can't see it, but go ahead. Thank you. Three quick questions. One, with the appearance of spam, are we taking any steps to protect our intellectual property, such as the festival logo, the smiling banjo, etc.? We have those things uh, copyrighted. We are actually uh, we were renewing a copyright on something that's older. Um, in the process. Um, so the answer is kind of yes and no, that, that we, we have them copyrighted and we're reporting spam, uh, but we're not doing anything more active than that. Do you have a suggestion? Uh, trademark and copyright law both require vigorous prosecution to keep your protection. I would suggest speaking to counsel. I'm not an expert. Okay. Question two for Kimberly. Um, are we taking steps to ensure that the website, as reconstructed, will be fully ADA compliant? I will double check with the website team, but I assume that it is. But then again, if you assume things, um, that gets you in trouble. So I will double check with the IT team as they are the experts. And thank you for that question. Okay, and last for uh, the governance folks, the bylaws specify some very specific intervals between the different steps in the election process. Please check that a December 6th meeting does not <laughs> violate the bylaws. Thank you, you're absolutely correct, it does. And I was not aware that our board meeting was that early in December. Uh, so, yeah, we, we have to work on this right now. Uh, um, we'll be discussing this with the, the board uh, later on after okay. the meeting. We may have to ex we may have to extend that into early January or something. OK, OK, yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for picking that up, David. Good. Um, Lynn Sharon, go ahead. OK. Um, I still haven't received a newsletter through email. Is there, is it being circulated? You are Lynn, muted. Sorry, Lynn, have you emailed me and asked me to double check? Because the answer is yes. We've sent out several newsletters, one per okay. month, actually. And what's your email, Kimberly? I, uh, it's, I can put it in the chat. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. thanks. And we'll, we'll get to the bottom of it. We, we've had Great a job, we've everybody. Had we, thank you, Lynn. We've had a few uh, we've had a few glitches where 
for some reason, well, and most of them have been somewhere along the line, your somebody's email program recognized it as spam. So it was ending up in spam folders. Okay. Um, and, you know. Also, regarding the ads in the program book, I physically walked in the neighborhood of where the folk festival is and handed out the solicitation letter to a lot of the businesses like even the car wash, the supermarket. And I know there's that new strip mall. So if anybody wants to do that, I'm out of state or I would do it. But anybody who wants to, that's a great resource. Good. Let's hang on to that idea. Thank you. Sure. Thanks, Lynn. Um, Jack, I'm going to get you. But Jim, a board member, has his hand raised. I wanted to respond uh, about the... Uh, intellectual property. Uh, as far as I know, since I was chairman of Merch, we have already always had the registered trademark uh, symbol on every shirt we used with the smiling banjo or the smiley uh, shirt. I'm not sure if all the others we had, we've had innumerable others have that protection, but I, I know we have been conscious of protecting the smiling banjo and the uh, smiley. Go ahead, Eric. Yeah, the only thing that I would say is, which we really haven't had time to discuss this, but um, my thought is that we we do need to get a letter out or a message out to anybody who we see that's violating our trademark. Um, but I also don't know if we want to get bogged down in like litigation and suing because that is going to take up a large amount of money which we don't time. have at time yeah um so we should we should look at formulating a basic boilerplate letter that we send out somehow and i can, I can work on that good in all your spare time thank you yeah um yeah and well, all the phillies are done right so there you go you a little breathing yeah, i got way too much time now yeah i really uh jack you had your hand up thank you yeah i stood too long last night at the game um just wanted to ask you real quick uh, on the memberships when they um, uh, uh, when uh, when they're up, are we getting uh, reminders automatically? It's just a simple question. We okay, go on. Uh, well, in the past, they weren't <laughs> they weren't automatic. In the past, we had a staff person going through the data and sending them out monthly in a batch. Yeah, um, I know. <laughs> and and there, you can see the possibility of human error that, there. Um, I'm hoping that moving forward, we can do better than that. And I'm going to punt this over to Rob. Yeah, one of our um, systems has shown that it spits out automatic renewals from time to time. Um, so that shows that we have the capacity once we can determine exactly the best way of doing it. We believe that Civi uh, might be able to do that in the future, but all of the memberships would then need to move into that. Um, we're not certain though yet uh, exactly how we're gonna do it, but we our intention is to figure out a way to automate it sometime during 2024. And if, if people aren't uh, certain when they should renew, um, to whom should they uh, get in touch? That's a good question. You can you can uh, email the directors, and uh, we will probably pass it on to one of our incredible volunteers to yeah. to find out. Uh, we, we, most likely, just, Aaron or someone else. We just did that this week with somebody. Um, so um, yeah, so it's it's a little awkward. One of the things that I um, feel moved to speak about because it's come up a whole bunch in side conversations in the last month has been just a asking people to remember that um, for probably 10 years, we had uh, somebody in some sort of executive role in the office. And for many years, we had other people that were paid to help out administratively. And we don't have any of that now. So when, when I got a question a while ago saying, who do I call about this? I was like, well, I think somebody's saying I was calling the office number. Who do I get a hold? It's like, uh, you can't do that. That's, you know. So the 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 paradigm, hate the word, the paradigm of that there's always somebody somewhere you can call is not the case now. Yeah. So just, 
Well, one aware. one real uh, thing that I just thought of while you guys were talking in my own nonprofit that I was treasurer of at one time, somebody wrote and then I rewrote an article on how at the end of the year, if you have an IRA or whatever, where you have to give distributions that uh, you can give it to a uh, 501c3. And if Kimberly wants that, I will uh, tomorrow um, send it to her or to, whom, to whomever. And you might think of the of doing it in January, pardon me, in December and January for the people who have to have an RMD, uh, a uh, have an IRA that, that have to give a certain amount or have to, pardon me, have to um, take out of their account a certain amount and how they can transfer it to a nonprofit. So that and also if you're thinking of it, perhaps an end of the year solicitation might not be bad as well. Right. Both those things, the solicitation has indeed been ta talked about. The um, uh, reminder that for the uh, required minimum distribution, we are here with uh, arms waiting is not a bad idea either. Thank you. Thank okay. You. Uh, Kimberly wants it, or should I send it to somebody else or just to the board? The, the, the draft that I have that explains to people how to do it that we used it for our own cooperative. Send it to directors at PFS because then we can we can you know depending on oh look at it yeah who gets what piece of it yeah 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 because we're doing a lot of that um cool good thank you Jack appreciate it um I am currently not seeing whose hands are up I know that um Julie had her hand up and I lost it Tom West also had his okay. Hand um miles my actually jack said what i was going to say about a year end appeal i'm good okay cool uh tom i'm sorry tom west your hand had been up and i i lost you somewhere are you still there yeah i am uh i was uh just typing it into chat so that it you had it in writing um my co my uh comment is regarding regarding the copyrights um first item is that i recall uh, that we, the as the Folk Song Society Board of Directors, were cautioned more than once over the years that failing to take action against the illegal users seriously weakened the ability to prevail in court. Um, that not taking action at one point can harm your ability to to succeed. Okay. The time. Um, no. Item was only halfway typed so far. Uh, we were also cautioned that are making of variations on the designs like spring thing, fall fling with leaves and birds and flowers and you know dancing people and stuff like that uh, is, is changing the, um, uh, the actual item that was copyrighted enough that that also weakens the, um, the ability right. to protect it. Um, None, I, none of that was ever tested in my knowledge. Um, but that I remember hearing counsel saying those two things. So interesting. Might want to you know, might might want to seek counsel's opinion, whoever that is these days. I know it's not Andy anymore, but whoever it is, um, uh, should be able to you know make both of those clearer. <laughs> Good. Good. Thank you. Really good information. Um, Eric Ring. Any has a question. Uh, hang on a second. Eric Ring, you made a note of that. Yeah, no, I, I understand that part of it. And I, I will say we also do talk with Andy and Andy yeah. gives us fantastic advice too. <laughs> right. Good. Thanks, Tom. Um, I'm sorry, six. Who did you say had their hand up? Annie. Annie, go ahead. I'm just curious about what has happened to the missing guitar. Oh, that's the answer. Um, we don't, we don't, we have not moved forward on that. We know where it is. We know who has it. We have to probably um, make it legal moves to get it back. By which you mean the one signed by David Crosby that was done by Martin in the Woodstock uh, era logos etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah 
Um, that's the best I can answer at this point. Um, Joan H. Jonah. Hello, this is Joan. Hi, Joan. Hi, just a thought about the 61 for 61. Um, it's not uncommon for nonprofits who are soliciting members or donations to, as you know, of course, to offer a um, pre membership premium, but often they will also give those donors or members the option of not receiving the membership premium just so that the full donation can go to the organization. Have we considered doing that? I know I was struck by that line item on the um, financials and I thought maybe many of us who have participated in that program would be interested in um, forgoing the that premium and letting the money go back to the uh, Folk Song Society. I don't think we've thought that one through for the t-shirts because what we got was a whole lot of people very excited to get a t-shirt. Um, however, it's a very good point. I know, I know that, you know, if you're, if WHYY is doing the coffee mug thing and they say, if you don't want your mug, you can, you, you know, you can deduct your whole amount, um, of that you're giving us minus the premium. So, uh, or with, you know, it doesn't involve the premium. So that's a very good piece we have to look at. Um, we don't usually do giveaways. So um, this one, this is something we need to talk about, but thank you. And yes, yeah. Justin, maybe we can get the t-shirts donated. That's always a possibility. Mara's next. Yeah, Mara, go ahead, Mara. Thanks. So um, let me start my video. So listening to the meeting tonight and just being so very sad that we have to pay these or hopefully we can abate them these hefty fines for certain things that didn't happen that should have happened my question is moving forward what systems are we going to put in place to prevent the types of activities or personalities that led to us being in this place so we don't get there again and i i don't expect an answer tonight but it's a question that's really been weighing on me as to how to checks in place that, that we don't have this type of thing happen to us again. And again, I don't expect an answer, but I just want to throw it out there for consideration. I don't think we can come up with an answer tonight, but it's a really important question. I think we all need to think about. Yeah. Because well, over it took years for us to get where we got. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And if I could answer that, I, I think that the society is only as strong as the committees that we have that are functioning, one of which is a good audit committee, um, which again, we have to keep revisiting. We had, we had two other people on the audit committee, but it's really having, I think, them take a look and seeing what's going on. And I think previously, um, I think we had an audit committee of one person. <laughs> yeah yeah so and the other thing is you know just basic the board needs to make sure that we are following good business practices and in this case paying our damn taxes or not paying filing our damn taxes filing, yeah. um because you know we people were told all sorts of variations of it's getting done or it's up to somebody else or some such thing and and um that, that speaks to that speaks to probably um, um, a lot of board oversight as checks and balances. I, I think the other thing that really has helped us out, um, I mean, I'm I'm doing those taxes now, um, and I'm happy to keep doing them into the future. Um, but having somebody, again, like Eric Robbins on the board, mm -hmm. who is a CPA, and I, I could not do the returns absent what um, Marie and what Eric Robbins have done. Right. There's, it's, there's, just, it's just vital to have people like that involved. Of course. But the component to that is hot, when you're hiring, you know, hiring staff and looking for certain red flags or behaviors, 
um, I, I just want to put it out there that I think it's super, super important that, you know, all the things that happen that we use them as a learning experience for, for if their red flags start to pop up or, you know, investigating before a hiring takes place or if there's any red flags to, you know, be able to have the authority to stop that behavior before it's too late. That's all I want to say. I love the organization. I've been a member for many, many years. I, I think everyone agrees with you, Mara. That's all. If, if, you know, if I'm not pointing just, fingers at anyone. I'm just saying, let's learn, please, from this. Yeah, Mara, if I can just chime in, um, yeah. I, I exclusively audit not-for-profits for a living. So, you know, I report to boards, finance committees. Um, I, you know, we uh, audit their financial statements. We prepare their 990s. 990s are required to be reviewed by the board. There's a question in the 990 asking how the board reviews it. Um, so, you know, when I got involved with the board, I, I know there's been a lot of uh, hatred towards Justin, a person, by the way, whom I've never met, but um, I didn't mention any names, but the lack of governance on whoever was on the board previous is, is astounding to me. I, I can't believe that the boards were not making sure the financial reporting was timely done and accurate. We're not making sure the financial statements were getting audited uh, and the 990s were being prepared and filed timely. Um, you know, we I don't know who was on the board, but we now, like I said, this is what I do for a living, um, Eric, as well. You know, um, so we're we're well aware we have our finance committee, the audit committee, like Eric said, um, you know, the board should have been given support. There was no one on staff that could do the accounting. I mean, that was obvious. There were no accountants on, on the board. So they should have even either had someone volunteer to do it or, or hire an outside CPA. Your part-time controller, I know, was here at one point. But it was the lack of oversight. And I think that the people on this board are keenly aware of the oversight that's necessary to provide proper governance. And then furthermore, to provide proper sustainability of the organization. You, you, we can't have an organization that's selling off its assets to pay its bills. We have to fundraise. We have to develop an investment pool. So we'll have additional money to help subsidize our programs going forward. So there's a lot of things that we are aware of that we need to do because we have people on the board that know how to do these things. Um, so I think that's a big part of the turning uh, for going forward for the future. If I can jump in here for just a second, Maura, you've opened up a fabulous issue. Um, we need to vote for people on the board who are as qualified as Eric Ring and Eric Robbins and Rob Kutzik. And we need to make sure that we're not just voting for people we know from our committee or something like that, because we need as many really professional people on the board as we can get. And I... And I agree with you, but I also think it's super important that, you know, when you're hiring, well, that the, you're really this, looking carefully at, at the people that are coming on board. This you know, board will yeah. be very careful in mm -hmm. hiring an executive director, believe me. And, and you know, even the person that's going to run the festival. Sure. Thank that's, you. I, that's, you know, again, yeah, I, I just want us to that learn that and move forward. We could, we could end up in a circular conversation, yeah. but thank you, Mari. Your, your points are valid, and I think everybody agrees. Thank you very much. Um, Dave, Chris, actually, Chris oh, has had put a meeting. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but Chris has had a question in the chat for a while now about fundraising moving forward. Yes, fundraising moving forward. If you recall, a while back we had a multi-phase plan, and we are in phase three, which um, essentially is that we are in the process of doing more than one thing at one time. And as I mentioned, the um, the sponsorships are a very important piece. We'll add, we'll uh, be beginning that now. We are working, uh, we have kind of a long range event that is slowly making its way through the proper channels, but we want to have a discussion about another event as well, or multiple events that are smaller. But um, I think what you may be getting at, yes, we do have a plan for an end of year uh, appeal. It may start as early as, um, giving Tuesday, but I want to get back together with the committee to make that final decision. And it would go through Give Butter, and it would have a theme or, or some, something that would kind of uh, be focused. So uh, we're going to have individual giving, but we want to focus on some of the big companies now. And uh, we are going to have at least one major event um, and a number of smaller events. I hope that answers your question. Now, grants. We're very fortunate to have 
at least uh, we have one grant writer very close to a uh, very active volunteer that has already written the grant for us. We have another uh, person that is willing to pitch in and help with written sponsorship and grants. So it'll be grants, events, individual giving, and corporate giving all beginning to, to happen at the same time now. Thanks, Rob. Dave Axler, one more. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, regards to Mara's comment, I would just ask that the board carefully review the terms of our codes of conduct for festival volunteers and members as they have been weaponized in the past and used improperly. Yep. Thank you. You're correct. In fact, we were just looking at that this week for some other issues and, and you were absolutely correct. It, one of those things with stuff like that is it gets turned around and used against people for the wrong reasons. So we as the board have the oversight on that. And that's why you have a board and not a person. So thank you, Dave. Are there any hands up? by Kimberly, go ahead. I just got a text update from Rob Mallerman, our amazing part of our IT comms team. Um, he says that they are still working on the back end of Civi to make sure that the membership reminders go out. They're not currently going out because they're still struggling because don't forget we had to move Civi to another server too. So once they get that fixed, that will be re-enabled and those membership reminders will start going back out automatically again. Just wanted to throw that out there. And for everybody out in what the hell is Civi land, Civi is a customer relations management uh, uh, database processing that sits in the background uh, and is very useful, but was collapsing under our previous servers. And so we need to, uh, we, that had to be moved to and made healthy again. So that's what Civi is. Um, Dave, I'm going to, I'm going to skip you for now because you've asked twice and I want to get Charlie in there. Charlie, go ahead. Muted. Go ahead, Charlie. I'm trying to unmute. <laughs> Get closer to the mic. Unmute. Okay, now can you hear me? No. You have to get closer to the mic, Charlie. Closer to the mic. That's my phone. Okay, can you hear me now? A little bit. Barely. Okay, wait a minute. Let me do what I'm sorry. I apologize. I've been having these issues all day. With my phone. All right, there we are on speakerphone. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, from the standpoint of uh, the uh, the payroll taxes, payroll taxes have all been paid. Uh, that was my responsibility. My responsibility has also been sales taxes. They are up to date. Payroll taxes are up to date. Uh, Nine ninety was not my responsibility, so I don't take any uh, credit or blame for that. But uh, I'm on top of the sales tax and. Uh, the payroll taxes. Of course, we won't have any payroll taxes after this year because we have no payroll. Um, I have one other one other question. We are in process of uh, reviewing our wills, and I have uh, included the Folk Song Society in my uh, in my will. And I just would like somebody who is more conversation conversant with the issue to give me the proper wording. Uh, one of the issues that came up was that I had told the attorney who's handling my wills uh, to uh, that, that I wanted the Folk Song Society as a uh, beneficiary. And of course, he has the uh, post office in uh, Germantown as the address. So I told him, well, you need to add the post office box. Now, is there a better way to do that? Uh, I think this is also something that needs to be publicized to, to the uh, uh, membership that this is something you can do and something we have missed for years and years and years. We have had people uh, who have been uh, mainstays of the society uh, who have uh, not remembered us in their wills, and it's a real shame. Uh, so anyway, that, that's, uh, that's where I am right now. Cool. Thank you, Charlie. Eric okay. Grant? Yeah. Um, a couple of things, Charlie. And with the payroll taxes, it's not so much the payment, which you took care of, but I think you also 
you prepared the forms, but then forwarded them to uh, somebody at the society and somebody at the society, not saying who, um, <laughs> never sent them into the IRS. So it's not lack of payment. It was lack of filing is the problem. Okay. Which is not like that. You prepared them. You sent them along. It was just the follow through that never happened. So, and yeah. So <clears throat> we, in terms of um, putting a charitable um, donation in your will, you don't have to have an address. You can name um you can just name the society without having an address on there i mean it's kind of helpful uh to some degree for people to find it but if you name the society then whoever your executor or executrix is can locate wherever the organization is to fulfill that um okay. donation and and actually charlie the p.o box if you some some address lines do not like a P.O. box and that 6700 Germantown Avenue address, if you just put the P.O. box at Philadelphia 191919, it goes to that post office. Um, but it's kind of a you know small issue. No, that's that that that's great. And uh, also, I have been using uh, my required minimum distribution to make contributions. It's a way to get tax deductible dollars to the folks on society uh, without actually being able to deduct them because the threshold for deductions, as you know, is pretty high these days. The other th question I have is, do I have to put uh, registered on the tattoo that's on my shoulder? Yes. <laughs> so so listen there's a there's at least two tattoo parlors not far from you in glenside make charlie, it charlie i can handle that with a sharpie and that's what I see. it'll be the donald okay, trump, guys. You're doing donald a great trump job. hurricane sharpie um eric robbins go ahead so first of all charlie thank you for including us in your will um there there is something that's called planned giving and it's not something that the society has ever done and what it is is for individuals who have large sums of money or, um and it would be larger sums of money not not some smaller ones but that would be planning on giving us uh a contribution in their will, they can actually give it to us while they're alive through a plan giving instrument, uh, which is called a split interest agreement. So what, what donors often will do is they'll create something. There's different types of split interest agreements, but an example of one would be what's called a charitable remainder trust, where you put the money in a trust. It's no longer your money. The trust becomes its own entity. Okay. But the stipulation of the trust is that you will be able to draw from, from the trust yourself to cover whatever spending needs you have while you're alive. And then the remainder amount, the charitable remainder trust upon your passing would then go fully to the not-for-profit. So it, but the not-for-profit actually gets to recognize that contribution for the estimate of what they're going to get based on the present value of, of the actuarial of your life. And we would be able to recognize that contribution and give you the credit while you're alive. And the trust can also allow for quarterly distributions to us. Um, and that's just one example, charitable remainder trust. There's also other trusts where people who are passing want to make sure their kids are taken care of and they set up and their kids are the beneficiaries as well as the not-for-profit. So there's a lot of that type of giving that has never been explored by uh, PFS uh, that would help uh, sustain us as an organization, get big dollar amounts. So if anyone in the membership um, that's listening now or knows anybody that has, you know, those types of sums of money that could possibly do it, you know, we can structure something, give you the credit while you're alive uh, for giving us the contribution, but also setting up to give you the security to make sure that you don't run out of money while you're alive, or maybe the beneficiaries, uh, your children and all, 
are also taken care of and then we wouldn't get anything until after they pass. So there's different ways. It's something we'll talk with Rob. That's a further down the fundraising plan from all the stuff we've done. That gets us to our plan of trying to have some sustainability for the organization going forward. Uh, so we'll certainly explore that. If we know people have money and want to give to FEST, we would love to, uh, excuse me, give to the Folks Home Society. We would love to, to hear from you. And Eric will put the agreements together for free. So, <laughs> and, even, and even though it's down the plan, down the line, uh, you can make that decision today. You can email um, either Eric or myself, and uh, we will one of the Eric's or myself. And we and thank you, Charlie. Uh, may you live a long time, and uh, may all, all of you do. But uh, we certainly are very appreciative, and that could keep the fest and the Folk Song Society alive for many more years. I intend to attend many more fests. Yay! Okay. Right. Good. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, my friend. Be a festival without Charlie Miller. That's right. Uh, Dave Axler, can you be quick? I got to pee. <laughs> yeah, quick. Too much are information. We, we going to find a better ticket vendor than Upt Events? Would you do me a favor and write down and send to me what your problems were with them? I will be happy to do that. I have a letter I sent them prior to the last festival with about a dozen points. They did not respond at all and neither did the festival office. Interesting. Okay. Uh, because, because I'd like to know that. Yeah, I'll get that to you. Thank you, thank you. You can send it directly to me or to the directors, whichever. Thanks, Dave. All right, do, are there any other hands up I do not see? I'm only seeing some of the, some of the board. All right, I think we could wind things up here. Uh, board members, does anybody have any other questions or concerns? All right, um, I'm going to ask that somebody move that we adjourn this meeting. So moved. Somebody please, uh, Jim, Jim Klingler has moved and Eric Robbins has seconded it. Let's all take a vote on it. And all in favor say aye. 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 All right, this, this meeting is, is now adjourned. Thank you all for your attendance. Thank you all for your questions and concerns. Thank you all for your love of the Folk Song Society. Thank you to the volunteers out there who've been working for us. Uh, it, uh, we couldn't do it without you. And to all the members who donated and are continuing to talk about donating even after they're not here. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, may that be a long time off. <laughs>